there are robots here amongst us. And digital humans exist. We've been told that artificial intelligence, machines, digital assistants, and robots can make our lives easier, more convenient, better. And technology has obliged we can obtain our food, clothing, anything without even leaving our homes. We can accept that surgeons, or rather telesurgeons, can sit at computers and they're not playing video games, they're directing machines to perform highly complex surgeries on us, more precisely than a human being can, and sometimes from an entirely different location. In the world of entertainment, science fiction is full of prophecies of digital humans, digital assistants, and androids. Think of some of the predictions in Ready Player One, where humans are compelled to live almost exclusively within an online world. They can specify their own appearance, race, age, gender, even species through avatars. Terminator, where robots are killing machines. Blade Runner includes humanoid sex workers. In Westworld, humanoids, uh, humans abuse and kill robots for fun until the humanoid's consciousness breaks free and rebels. In the prophetic 2001 A Space Odyssey, the disobedient computer, HAL 9000, takes over the running of the space station from its human captain with the classic line, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> Science fiction predicts what happens when the line between human and machine becomes blurred. And that day is fast approaching. Indeed, scientists have already created a handful of prototype digital humans that behave with a greater humanness than ever before. Her name is Siren, and the movement of Siren's features represent the state of the art of animation centered around the science of advanced computer vision. Computer vision enables computers to see, read, track, and record complex human expressions and to instantly reproduce them in digital humans like Siren. Here, computer vision is tracking the human eye. The dots denote specific areas that the computer has targeted to record movement. How we blink and how the pupil moves are key to our human look. As the saying goes, the eyes are the mirror or the window of the soul. And the face is the index of the mind. Computer vision captures a spectrum of human facial expressions used to drive the performance of digital characters. Digital humans are created using highly detailed scans of a real human being mapped onto a computer-generated 3D model. To animate the features of synthetic humans, rigging is added. This acts like the strings on a puppet, digitally connected or solved between the, the, the tracking of the movement of the real human being and the computer model. Meet Mike. He's not real. Computer vision has captured and retargeted the subtleties and nuances of expressions of the human Mike in order to animate the synthetic copy of him, a digital double. 
You could call it transference of the soul. You've already met Siren. She can speak for herself. I was created by an international team of artists and engineers who wanted to challenge our ideas of what a synthetic human could be. I've got state-of-the-art, real-time graphics and an unprecedented level of detail in my eyes, skin and hair. In this live footage, the actress is wearing a head-mounted camera and a motion capture suit. Almost unbelievably, she is performing Siren in real time. Siren can also be facially driven by any number of individual human beings. You may have noticed that we've just seen her performed here by two different actresses. In case you were wondering, the non-human siren is the one in the red dress. <laughs> anyone can be anyone at any time. That's something else for us to talk about. The idea of digital humans may sound like fiction, but so did wearing your phone on your wrist. Synthetic humans are already appearing in films, TV programs, video games, theatres, shows and social media with ever-increasing fidelity and realism. Many more are on their way, including digital copies, creatures and recreations of famous people from any period in time. But I predict in the next 10 to 20 years or so, we will all have our own believable digital doubles. Here's how it might look. When you switch it on, your digital double will speak when you speak. Or when you type via text to animation, there and then, emoting and expressing itself as you do, or exactly as you want it to. We can record and build individual libraries of our personal traits, our expressions, our typical responses. These can be blended, tuned, modified, beautified. to communicate on our behalves in real time, whether we're there or not. Pervasive uses will include counselors, advisors, carers, providing us with education, reference, even companionship. It will become commonplace for us to interact with and rely upon credible digital versions of doctors, nurses, and teachers broadcasting into our homes and into the classroom. One person can control many digital humans, and many could control one. Let's just think about this. You could have an entire telesales team or digisales team all identically scripted and synthesized to perform as exactly the same digital human on brand. Dedicated to giving us even more enthralling consumer experiences. <laughs> Customer service will be transformed. Let's face it. As human beings, we have good days and bad days, and times during the day where we're more alert, happier, nicer. But digital humans, <laughs> they never tire. They can be adapted to suit any performance or audience. They can be upgraded and evolved performing perfectly over and over again. They can be as smart or as dumb as you like. They can't get sick, they can't sulk, and they don't get hangovers. <laughs> Digital humans 
can appear on any device with a screen or via virtual reality, mixed reality, or whatever media comes next, telepresent and omnipresent. Digital humans can also exist in a physical form through robotics. Take the robot that I met recently called Sophia from Hanson Robotics. Sophia has already spoken at the United Nations and has become the world's first robot citizen. And this is even before computer vision has lent a hand to further improve her humanness. We're working on it. And these are the very early days, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence. Is anyone else feeling a sense of trepidation? <laughs> As always, with great innovation comes great responsibility. To what extent can we trust ourselves as human beings, as creators? To explore the future, we can look at the past. History can be an infallible predictor. Medical advancement and medicine are incredible examples of great human progress, often coupled with immeasurable selflessness and immense responsibility. But this is not always the case. We know that millions and millions of lives have been lost and taken through war, violence, exploitation, genocide. It is up to us to educate and program our digital selves, artificial intelligence, and robots to rise above the atrocities that we're capable of. Stephen Hawking predicted that artificial intelligence will overtake humans at some point in the next hundred years. And we need to make sure that computers have goals aligned with ours. I've thought a lot about this prediction, and I would add that we need to ensure that our own goals and the goals of the digital humans we create are aligned only with the very best of what humanity has to offer. Thank you.